Welcome, boils and ghouls, to the wildest, creepiest, most spine-tingling anthology of nightmares ever put on screen. That's right, because on my way home from doing a lot of cocaine with Stephen King, I stopped off of my local video store and I rented Creep Show. The movie where birthday cakes come with a side of revenge and where cockroaches are way more than just a kitchen nuisance. So if you're not screaming by the end, then you're probably already dead. The good old days of horror comics, cheap thrills, cheesy lines, and zombies who just want some cake. The movie Creep Show proves three things. One, don't mess with Father's Day. Two, if you see a meteor, maybe don't touch it. And three, no matter how much money you have, cockroaches don't care. And with that being said, I've seen enough horror movies to know that when the bugs show up, it's time to move out. So without further ado, let's jump on into Creep Show. The film begins with a young boy named Billy, who is reading a horror comic called Creep Show. His father, played by Tom Atkins, angrily yells at him for reading such trash and throws the comic in the trash can. The father then slaps Billy and later on in the scene tells his wife, that's why God made fathers, baby. That's why God made fathers. Once his parents are out of the room, the creep shows up and lets the kid know that everything's gonna be all right. With the wind blowing through the window and the pages of the comics as they begin to flutter, this provides the transition for us into our first story, Father's Day. This centers around the wealthy Grantham family. You see, every year the family gathers to commemorate Father's Day, but the patriarch, Nathan Grantham, was murdered by his own daughter, Bedelia. Nathan was a cruel man who constantly demanded his Father's Day cake from Bedelia. In a fit of rage, Bedelia killed him with an ashtray. As we're in modern times, we see Bedelia arriving at the family mansion visiting Nathan's grave. As she sits by the grave drinking, she recalls the night that she murdered her father. While she's sitting there, Nathan's corpse rises from the grave, seeking revenge. He staggers into the mansion, killing each family member one by one, all while demanding his cake. Nathan eventually finds his way to his final victims and gets his Father's Day cake by placing a severed head on a platter. The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill. Our second story features a farmer named Jordy Verrill, who's played by Stephen King. The story begins with a meteor crashing into Jordy's farm. He decides to investigate and ends up touching the meteorite, although hoping that he can sell it. However, the meteor breaks open and his strange glowing liquid pours out. Not long after, Jordy notices a small patch of green plant-like growth starting to cover his fingers where he touched the meteor. As time passes through the night, this green growth spreads across his body and his entire property. He tries to stop it by taking a bath, but that only accelerates the process. Eventually, Jordy is completely covered in the green substance, which is taking over his home. The story ends with Jordy, now fully consumed by the alien plant life, committing suicide with a shotgun, while a nearby radio forecast predicts rain, which will help the alien growth spread even more. Something to tide you over. In the third story of the comic book, a wealthy man named Richard Vickers, played by Leslie Nielsen, discovers that his wife, Becky, has been having an affair with Harry Wentworth, played by Ted Danson. Richard decides to extract revenge by luring both Becky and Harry to the beach. He first tricks Harry by pretending to offer a chance to save Becky, but instead, he buries Harry up to his neck in the sand near the shoreline. As the tide begins to rise, Richard sets up a TV monitor showing Becky in the same situation, buried up to her neck, further down the beach. Richard leaves them both to drown as the tide comes in, enjoying watching the rising water on his TV screens back at his luxurious home. However, later that night, the waterlogged corpses of Harry and Becky return to confront Richard. The two of them now, reanimated as seaweed-covered zombies, 
trap Richards in the same fate, burying him up to his neck as the tide slowly rises. The story ends with Richards screaming in terror, but confident that he'll hold his breath for a long, long time. The Crate. The story is about a mysterious crate found beneath a staircase at a university. A janitor discovers the crate which has been sealed since the 1800s and he calls in Professor Dexter Stanley to investigate. Professor and janitor open the crate and inside is a vicious creature named Fluffy that attacks and kills the janitor, dragging him back into the crate. After Fluffy takes out one more student at the university, Professor Stanley runs to tell his friend Henry Northup, who is unhappy in his marriage to his overbearing wife, Wilma, who's played by Adrian Barbeau. Oh, but you can just call her Billy. Henry sees the crate and its creature as the perfect solution to his problem. He gets his friend to have a couple drinks and then eventually gets him to fall asleep. He lures Billy to the university, telling her there's a big mess she needs to see. When she arrives, the creature Fluffy leaps out of the crate and devours her. Henry then cleans up the scene and throws the crate into a lake, believing the creature has been dealt with. However, the final shot shows the creature breaking out of the crate at the bottom of the lake suggesting it's still alive and ready to strike again. Our final story of Creep Show is called They're Creeping Up On You. This story follows Upson Pratt, a wealthy, cruel businessman who lives in a sealed, sterile apartment because of his intense fear of germs. He's obsessed with keeping his apartment spotless, but soon finds a cockroach inside. He quickly kills it, but more cockroaches start to appear. Pratt tries to call for help, but as the infestation grows, he finds himself overrun by the bugs. The power goes out and the cockroaches swarm through his apartment, getting into his food, his bed, and all over his body. In the final scene, Pratt is found dead and his body burst open, revealing that cockroaches have completely filled him from the inside out. As Creepshow comes to an end, we get a special appearance by Tom Savini. We return to Billy, the boy from the beginning. He has found a voodoo doll in the Creepshow comic and is using it to get revenge on his father for destroying the comic in the first place. His dad complains of severe pain and the final shot shows Billy gleefully sticking pins into the voodoo doll. One of the things that makes Creepshow stand out for me is the collaboration between George Romero and Stephen King. You can feel their influence throughout the entire film from the writing to the direction. The cast from Tom Atkins to Adrian Barbeau all bring their A game and give us performances that are unforgettable. Especially Barbeau's, she's amazing in the crate. What can you say though? The visuals in the soundtrack absolutely mesmerized me as a kid. The bright colors, comic book transitions, and eerie music all combined to create an experience that left me glued to the screen. Even now the movie holds up because how well it balances horror with humor. And I'm a big horror humor kind of guy. And I can't forget to mention that ashtray. It's in every single story if you hadn't noticed. A fun little detail that ties the anthology all together. Creepshow remains one of my top five horror films of all time. Whether it's Nathan Grantham demanding his cake, Leslie Nielsen bearing Ted Danson alive, or Stephen King turning into a plant, this film delivers on all fronts. Now, as I always say, if you haven't seen it yet, you're missing out on one of the greatest horror anthologies ever made. So the next time you're with your dad on Father's Day, make sure to bake him a cake. And until next time, I'll see you at the video store.